Hi, and welcome back. I'm Amir Sabirovich, and you're tuning in to the next episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast. With our episodes, we hope to inspire you to take the necessary steps and follow your heart and passion in everything you do. So last week, we had the opportunity to listen to Franz Reichardt, the customer listener. Here is a short recap from the podcast of last week. Never miss an opportunity to ask for feedback. So ask your uh, team, and not only ask, but give your team feedback, listen to each other, and ask for suggestions on how to improve. If you have missed the interview with Franz, please go to the 11th episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast and listen to what he has to say about customer listening. Now, last week, I promised you an interview with Klaus Kjeldsen. Unfortunately, I had some bad experience with the audio, so the recording was not that good. Now, today, I give you a serial entrepreneur who has been involved in technology since day one. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new episode of Challenging the Status Quo. And today, I have a special guest. Why? Because we go uh, way back. We go that far that together we try to develop uh, a virtual mall that was called D Mall, I believe. Uh, he's a yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's a he's a serial <laughs> entrepreneur in high tech. His uh, name is Jeroen Moll. And why is he special? Uh, I get uh, every few weeks I get a call and he's very excited and he says, "Amir, I bought a new company. What you think of it?" So, Jeroen, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you for taking time. Hi, hi, Amir. <laughs> hi, good morning. Hi. Hey, uh, Jeroen, uh, of course, I introduced you largely with your entrepreneurial skills and high tech, etc. So, um, of mm-hmm. course, you're not going to escape the question of telling who you are and how your journey been um, in the past decades. So, mm-hmm. where did you start and uh, how did you end up where you are right now? And I mean, totally like, okay, go ahead. You don't have to tell me that you were playing with marbles, but well, if that is part of the journey, just go ahead. (laughs) Well, okay. I I, I was born in, in, in Horen, a small place in the Netherlands. Um, and, and my journey begins, I think probably in in middle school, because there we learned that I was, uh, I had some dyslexia and now that's, that's, that's not a big issue at all, but if you have that issue, everybody's telling you that you're uh, not, you will not succeed. You will probably be, for, for me, it, it was, was like people were telling me that I, I couldn't do something. And I thought, well, I'm not stupid. So I was always trying to find out a way to prove them wrong. And that, that's also defined me who I am today. Uh, because if some, someone tells you that it's not possible with technology, then I always say, well, it is possible, but it's it not invented yet. So let's try to invent it. So for me, that that uh, period that uh, they called me stupid uh, is, is quite defining in, in how I'm uh, acting today. Uh, and still, because still, if some something calls me, st- someone is trying to call me stupid, I, I will prove them wrong. Um, so so that was the beginning of, of how my character was was developed. And uh, later on, everybody thought, because probably also by, by the dyslexia, that uh, my, my math is, is quite good. So they said, oh, he's a technical guy. So he, they sent me to a technical school. And on that school, I learned that commercial things are, are more intrigued. It, it, well, it intrigues me even more. So that, that's why I, after my technical uh, degree, I started with uh, business administration. And then finally, I could uh, bridge those two worlds. And that's what I'm still doing today. Uh, looking to new technology. And if I find new technology, uh, I want to see, okay, how can we change or combine technologies that will become an interesting product for the market? Uh, so that's what I've, I've been doing for the last, well, 15 years now. So actually, if I understand you correctly, uh, you were practicing the name of this podcast throughout your whole life since your childhood, mm-hmm. like challenging the status quo. <laughs> like everybody that said you're not fitting into the framework of the system, you said, well... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not actually, <laughs> but I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It all it it it, uh, it developed uh, who I am today. So so my character is based on that. 
Um, and I, I really think if, if some, someone thinks it's not possible to really find out how it can be done. And uh, well, I read a lot on, on the internet or, or try to find out uh, how it can be done and I always find a solution. So um, if, if you have new technology, you want to, to know how it works, I want to, to have a deep dive, uh, not too deep because I'm not a developer anymore. I, I, well, I'm, I'm still developing, but I'm not calling myself a developer anymore. Uh, but I do want to know the ins and outs uh, to be able to, to do something with the product. Yeah, yeah, because you, you switched from, from uh, you finished your technical school, then you did your business manipulation, ta-da. But actually, you didn't mm -hmm. tell us what the journey was. So after you finished, <laughs> did, did you, you were like immediately entrepreneur or did you have a job? So tell us, no. tell us about that journey. No, no, I, I'm, I'm really hard-headed. So I thought, okay, let, let's... After my, my study, let's go to five different companies, uh, probably a year each. So I gave myself five years to, the, the, the time to discover different companies and to, to watch inside their kitchen how everything is done before I start with my own company. Um, so I did, it, I did five companies, but it took me eight years because the uh, econo economy wasn't well, that get good at this moment. Uh, so after those five companies, I started my, my first company in 2006. Um, but I was just renting myself out as a uh, kind of a webmaster, if you can call it that. Uh, so web development and renting yourself out. Um, so so it's a company without any personnel. It's it's like still being on the payroll, but but then you just send an invoice instead of you get paid uh, by your uh, employer. Uh, so that didn't feel that that good. Uh, because that was not the reason why I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I started a new company in, in 2007, I think, six or seven. Um, and that was all about uh, augmented reality. It's quite new at that time. Um, I found someone on, on, a, on an event called CBIT in Hanover. And he showed me augmented reality and I was immediately in love. But I couldn't at that time see what I could do with it. Uh, so it took me like three or four months and then... Finally, I, 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 well, I had an idea. <laughs> so I, I went to France. <laughs> well, I, I bought a license and then, then came back to the Netherlands trying to, to sell augmented reality then. But uh, you had to have a, uh, a game, uh, gamer's laptop, a uh, quite heavy one with a big camera and, uh, well, expensive software, naturally, to be able to do something with it. Uh, and I want to bring that down because it was not sellable in the Netherlands. Uh, 30,000 euros for a license was too, too steep uh, for most marketing campaigns. So I went to Munich and there I found a different company, but they didn't have the augmented reality without the markers, uh, like a QR code. And uh, I asked them if, if, if they could change their, their software to be able to have any image. And as soon as they realized that, that it was a uh, marketing potential, if, if they did have a uh, markerless uh, AR, augmented reality, um, they came back and they said, well, we can do it. And uh, we, I lowered uh, the license price from 30,000 to 10,000 euros. <laughs> so so that, was, that was a good step. And, and later on, I, I, I met a, a Russian guy and he was really good in image recognition. So I a little bit teased him uh, that he could do AR as well. And so he did, uh, and then we had our own augmented reality engine, and we lowered the price to three thousand. <laughs> so, so that was quite fun in, in that time. Uh, and and even when the other companies also went down with their prices, we even uh, went lower to a thousand euros. Uh, but that was all done in flash. Well, we know how that uh, ends. <laughs> so, <laughs> all, I was just remembered by that. <laughs> I was having a meeting and somebody said, what is that thick book behind you? And I was like, yeah, that, that O'Reilly book. And I picked it up <laughs> and it was JavaScript for Flash. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> all it's the... very useful for, for hitting somebody in the head or killing mosquitoes. Exactly, exactly. Well, it, it was a good time and, and we had a lot of fun. And naturally, the... Uh, company in Munich uh, is, is now uh, owned by Apple, uh, so they did, they did well. The Russian guy is now uh, working for Facebook, and he does the the uh, Instagram uh, AR there. So they all uh, landed well. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good, uh, yeah, good yeah. teacher, right? Yeah, well, they were they had <laughs> they had the brains. I only had the ideas. So uh, 
<laughs> they, they, they did all the programming. Yeah. So, so after others had success and you didn't, what happened then? Uh, if the technology is, is, is if, if, if you do it for like three years, uh, you're, you're a little bit done with it. Uh, and now even, even now all those new augmented reality ideas, we already did it. Uh, I had a postcard for my daughter when she, oh, that's 10 years ago. So, so she was uh, uh, 10 years ago, I had a postcard and we posted it out and people had to uh, show it to the, to the uh, webcam. And then uh, you could see my daughter dancing on that card. And that was 10 years ago. And now they're bringing it out if, if, if they have something new. Uh, even Facebook now exclaims, hey, we have AR uh, in, in our Facebook uh, ads. We already did that with um, a campaign in 2008. And that was for um, uh, Guinness. And we, we even won an award for that. So we were a little bit ahead of our time. Um, and, and then after three years, I'm, I'm really like, okay, done this, done this, that, and done that. Let's go to find something new. And that's, that's always my story. Uh, if, if, it's, if, if it becomes mainstream, I, I'm getting out. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, ah. if, if it lands in the status quo area, yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Oh, so, so, yeah, people are still calling me dumb. <laughs> That's, we're back to that again. Uh, so, no, I, I, I am actually uh, now building uh, software platforms uh, that make uh, your life easier and uh, depends on the topic. So I have a, a consumer platform for photo books. Uh, it's really easy to create a photo book. Uh, just because we started it, it was something new where we, we had some research and uh, there was a gap. And we thought, well, let, let's jump into that gap and, and create those photo books uh, quite easily. And, and uh, that, that still gives me a, a good income. And the other side, we are now having a platform. And it's quite interesting because we also connected it to the blockchain. Uh, just f blockchain is, is, is not for, for, for the payment or whatever. It's just for validating and a single source of truth truth um, and and that platform is is all about uh, making it easier to comply to the rules and legislation uh, for all those entrepreneurs who are handling uh, or are having difficulties with with uh, complying uh, and that's fun it's it's new it's completely serious business uh, naturally we, we try to make a platform that billions can use and we're still waiting for our government to say that it that people have to supply their information to the government about their uh, environmental uh, or safety uh, uh, checks. And if, as soon as that happens, well, we, we are in, the, in, in a good spot. You already said. Hey, and, <clears throat> yeah. and, and looking in retrospect, because you experienced uh, the, the augmented reality, virtual reality. So what mm -hmm. would you say about the world today? So... Um, Last week, I dug up some articles from 93 and 94 talking about privacy, Big Brothers watching you, uh, data, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. It seems like the journalists ran out of the text and they're just reposting something that was 30 years ago, hoping nobody figures it out. Um, <laughs> and you just said, like, you know, the technology that, of course, it was it was not as advanced and and we have, have advanced in in last, you know, th what you're talking about was pre iPhone era or pre Samsung era, as I would like to, but the pre iPhone era for me definitely. Yeah. Um, what is the biggest differentiator? So when you, when you compare the time in 2007 when you started with um, an AR solution that costed 30k and you brought it down to 1000 and and, mm -hmm. and it still it was not adapted by the whole world for the marketing purposes and now it kind of it, it, it's it's real living it's past but you know everybody's bragging about it but you says mm -hmm. it's new is this, is oh, this only for ar or how, can you tell me something about that Quite interesting. Yeah, many things is, is uh, technology is improving. So uh, first, when we when we're looking at uh, VR, because it's 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 out there for quite a long time. We had uh, the silicon graphics uh, hardware to to be able to have a head mounted device uh, where you could see uh, uh, VR, but the pixels on those screens were quite high, quite big. So the the image was was not really really good. And now if you're looking at an iPhone and, and it's, it's 
the computer in an iPhone is, is great or in any device is great. So if you put that in a, uh, as a VR um, uh, device, then you have a, a quite clear image and, and uh, even 4K videos can be streamed on your iPhone uh, in VR. And it gives you a really, really good impression. And even the hardware, the, the cost is, is, is so low at this moment. Um, it's really, really doable. The same with AR. When we started with a gamer's laptop and a, a, a heavy uh, camera, not even a webcam in, in the beginning, and, and now everything is inside a small iPhone or a small, small uh, smartphone. So the technological miniaturization helped actually achieve that process, but actually the, the, the essence of the technology didn't change. Mm -hmm. uh, the appliance of it also didn't change that much, right? Because a business model in AR, VR was always a challenge. Exactly. And, and now you can go into the mass. And if you go into the mass, the business model also changes. So uh, if you have a, a, a movie and only 10 people can, can look at it uh, because they, they have the hardware, it's, it's not that a good business model. But if it opens up to millions because of the, the, the phones and the distribution networks we already have, uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And even the gaming, I, I, I love VR games because you're completely in a different surrounding and uh, even with the Oculus. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's uh, the, the immersive uh, feeling you will get. It's, 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 it's uh, remarkable. If you haven't tried it yet, do it because it's really fun. I did actually. I raced uh, a race car, and it was uh, that was total uh, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and I, I I actually got quite nauseous because I I kept I kept <laughs> flying out of the <laughs> out of the curbs. Yeah, that's so, the, so. yeah. There's a, there's a little there's a little trick for that, and and, and many people uh, do forget it uh, because they didn't read all the papers. It's called a virtual nose because because of our nose, and I know you have a big one. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, that, uh, that's uh, making no. the noise on a, on a, on a mic right now. Exactly, exactly. Well, because of your of your nose, and if, if you close out, uh, close one eye, you, you can you can see your nose, and and with two hours, probably it's invisible. The reason is our our brain filters it out, so we don't see it, but it's actually there. And our brains, they, they have it like a compass. So uh, because of our nose, nose. <laughs> Uh, we are not dizzy. And in a virtual reality environment, you don't see your nose. So what you have to do is just add a fixed uh, uh, small item in the screen. Uh, and that's, that's your like your compass. And that then you're not dizzy anymore or not that much. And normally you see it a lot in VR that you had just uh, the direction you're looking at. So an actual compass is what they use in, inside the right corner or something. And that will help you no, sorry, something came in. That will help you uh, to to uh, not get dizzy. So it's a virtual nose. You have to add it, and, and if you don't, well, then you have it when, when you're in a car, and and your brain will say you go to the left, but your body doesn't go to the left. You get dizzy exactly. But it's a trick. Hey, and it, so, so actually, when when we boil it down, you're saying, well, the the business model still remains. The technology mm -hmm. actually advanced only in the fact that it's smaller and um, cheaper to acquire. Yeah. But in essence, not a lot of things changed. The The biggest change is actually that now you have masses that you can acquire for using your product. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's Hey, and and can you can you say because you said well you know you had some you had some you had some changes every three years right uh, mm -hmm. how does success look like to you? Well, <laughs> if you're jumping for, from one startup to the other one uh, in, in about three years, well, each three years, uh, uh, you always become will stay a startup. Uh, so that's a story of my life. So I never will be rich, or, or if, if that's the the. Uh, success you're looking for, and, and, and not no, 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 no. I'm looking. I'm looking for the definition. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so how do you define success? I don't care about the the capitalistic. Uh, <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> car, big cows, I, that's that's not how I see this success. I I think every person has uh, a definition of success, which mm -hmm. makes him. For me, it's happiness, being happy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I would say it, when my heart, my my brains, and what I'm doing are aligned, then I'm I'm successful. Um, yeah. That is that is success to me. So so this is this is what I mean. 
Yeah, for, for me, it's it, it's it's quite dorky because everybody is, is is saying it. It it's the journey, and uh, it, it's it's for me that each time I can do something new, I can do something fun, and and uh, after each year, you look back and say, "Oh, this was a great year. We did this, we did that," and 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 never a dull moment. And I think uh, when it becomes a dull moment, I will probably uh, will be exiting that company. Um, so for me, I, I always need a challenge. That that's 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 what I need, and uh, to to make it fun, to make it uh, interesting, uh, and that will make me happy. So success is is the journey. So if if I'm ever going to retire, and I don't think I will ever retire. I'll probably have my last st- startup uh, the day before I die. Um, it's still coughing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And 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 probably then then uh, I will look back and say, well, I had I had a great, a great life with with great uh, uh, opportunities and and uh, naturally I I have a lot of mistakes as well and and that those are learnings, uh, yeah, and and that makes you that makes you smarter in your next move. That's awesome. And and uh, so so from all these jumping from one startup to another, if I would give you a time machine and you could travel. To the beginning of your career, what would what would be the advice, or what what is the thing you wished you knew at the start? Oh, <laughs> it's something I still have to learn. It's focus. So I will I will say, <laughs> as the young Jeroen, please please keep your focus and 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 maybe stay a little bit longer from startup to scale up or something like that, um, because focus is is an issue. Uh, I'm 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 too uh, enthusiastic about so many different things uh, and before you know it you're running five companies and then you have to let go of a few companies uh, because of, of your time you're only 24 hours a day and I only need to sleep for six but working 18 hours a day is, is quite a lot uh, so yes that, that's that's a big issue this so focus is, is the main point hey, and and what do you do to challenge the status quo well that, that's a big question because uh, um, well, I, I never look at status quo at all. Uh, it's, it's just uh, you're in the middle of it and I'm doing my thing and whatever someone else is doing is, is, is their thing. So uh, I'm always wondering, challenging the status quo. I'm, I'm not actually going to challenge it. It's, it's uh, not a direction I want to walk. So if, even if, if you have a traffic jam, everybody goes to the right. I think, well... Let's go to the left. Maybe it's it's faster. Uh, so that that's that's your nature, probably. So you would say that challenging the status quo is in your nature. Yeah. So that, that's that's why I cannot say it's it's challenging because it's it's just who I am. So. Okay. So so for you for you it's a walk in a park. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be talking to you and you would say, well, this year I'm celebrating 25 anniversary working at one company. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see. You you just got depressed from even thinking yeah, about exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and <laughs> yeah, I, but I think the the the, the new generation, uh, because I'm also getting old, uh, the new generation is is even uh, more uh, jumping from one job to another. Just like I'm going to work now for a few months, and then I have a sabbatical because I'm going to be backpacking in Australia, or something like that. Uh, so so, yeah. so the but. Yeah, then I'm yeah, then, ahead, then I'm sorry. old school because I'm already like like working somewhere for three years, and then that's already a long time for me. And for them, it's it's. Yeah, really this is something good. that. This is something that I've just read uh, from HBR. They said like uh, I, I read two articles. So like the first one is the college degree. Mm-hmm. Um, that is like not the most important thing for, I, I, I believe that even big companies are moving out. So if you have all straight A's, nobody will hire you. That means that you are not creative or innovative about anything. You just know how to read books. So there is no self-initiative at all. Uh, but that set aside, uh, so the college degree in the future will not be the main thing for which people are hired. But the second one is that actually jumping from job to job mm-hmm. uh, won't be seen as before this de- is defined, right? Job hopping. Exactly. Yeah. And for old existing companies, that is a scary thing. Like I'm going to invest a year in him and he's going to jump or half a year or whatever. Um, 
Oh, uh, but this is for the generation Z and for the generation Y is something that is actually quite normal. So just like you said it, I'm going to do it for a half year and then I'm going to scuba dive in the Maldives or whatever. Well, it, it's it's uh, um, not really. I think it's it's all has to do with uh, uh, the uh, economy at this moment because there's a little uh, there is a, a big um, how do you call it. Um, Many people uh, or many companies are looking for. Uh, well, no, no, no. I hate to, to, to say to say it in an interview. Now, if if um, at this moment a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, sorry, are, are looking for employees, right? And there's there's not too many good people on the market. So if you have all straight A's, uh, you can choose a job anywhere because you're really good. Uh, so you know. Because you're good, so so all those entrepreneurs are looking for that one guy who can do it all. Uh, if you're looking at all those job description, they they want uh, they want the best. They want to have a superwoman or a superman to to fill in that job. Um, but because they are not that ma- many there, uh, the prices for those guys go up, or they can go from one job to another job because they are they are invited too many times. And social media is helping with this as well, or LinkedIn. If you're not straight A's, so if you're a little bit lower than that, uh, you are interesting for big companies because they can invest in you because you probably will stay. Um, so I think the big companies should target those guys uh, for a more loyal uh, ent- uh, employer than the, st- than the straight A's. Yeah. I totally disagree with you because I think the guys and girls with straight A's will go for the loyalty. Mm-hmm. They're not good at everything. They're good at one thing. Really? That's learning. Yeah. I think if you <laughs> had a six or a C at high school, mm-hmm. yeah. that meant that actually you were good at economics. So you could calculate how I'm going to pass the <laughs> year and do everything, you know, and party and go out and work <laughs> and have a side hustle and still succeed ex- at school. If you were- Yeah, okay, that, that, that depends on, on the job naturally, because uh, uh, sure, I, I agree with you that uh, uh, Homo economicus is the one who is have the best result for the lowest input. Uh, so to maximize your input, uh, <laughs> output by uh, the input. Uh, but if, if you want to have a, like a, a scientist, you want to have it straight A's. Because he's the one who, yeah, of who really knows the details. Yeah, uh, or yeah, a yeah. developer as well. You, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't. Depends. You, you <laughs> wouldn't put me behind a chemistry desk for, with my C, right? Uh, no. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> of course, I. Okay, no, no, no. okay. So, so maybe we can say if you if you are looking for entrepreneurial guys and girls that mm-hmm. will prove themselves in every field, then yeah. something like a B or a C, it's okay. They will probably no. kill it, but if you're going going for like jobs that really require scientific methods, etc., that are actually hazardous or have a critical processes in them, then straight A's would help. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a very nice thesis. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know, oh, and, and I, I and I and I wasn't a straight A student at all. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. This is no, I, I, I did the fast track. <laughs> what is your your ultimate goal? Like for Thanos, it was the glove with the uh, with uh, the Infinity Stones. What is your glove with Infinity Stones? Poo. Yeah, well, I didn't say I'm going to ask any easy questions. No, no, no. Exactly, exactly. Well, my horizon is isn't that far. So, looking forward. Uh, well, well, naturally, I want to have a few of my startups doing really, really well uh, uh, because that's also some kind of, of proof that you did something good. Um, well, I, I, I do have a, a few projects uh, uh, still I want to do. Uh, I want to do a Kickstarter project, and I already have the project there, but I have to, to uh, uh, develop a few things first. Uh, so Kickstarter is on my bucket list, and I, I do have a business bucket list. Uh, with things I want to do, um, so so that's yeah, and, and yeah, I just bought a new company, and also that is, is still has to be uh, developed and <laughs> getting it off the ground. Yeah. 
But go ahead. Uh, oh, it's it's no, no, it's 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 uh, something that that just comes on your path and uh, uh, helping someone out, and then later on you find out he has a good product, but he's uh, marketing it or he he didn't put it on the market in the right way, uh, and now he wants to to get to get rid of it uh, with with his uh, reasons. Um, so we are now going to change the product, give it a different name because the name wasn't good. Um, and it's, it's, it's a good product. It's, it's called uh, data hamster. And, uh, it's, it's what we say is you have the male chimp. So the, uh, the chimp for the male and the uh, hamster for the data. Uh, so we call it data hamster and it's going to help you with, with, uh, getting to know your customer. So, so um, all, all your visitors on your website are anonymous. And, and if you're looking at uh, what, what Google Analytics is doing, it's telling you the how and, and, and the, the what and, and the when. And we want to know the why and uh, the who. So that, that's what we are doing with our software. So it, it does collect a lot of data. So that's why data hamster. And sure, we have to look at the GDPR and everything is, is, is done correctly. And that's what it is doing, it is doing it correctly. Uh, but you get to learn about your customers and, and on a on really uh, single level. And well, you, you naturally you can communicate with him on the right way. So we think that this is uh, something really good for small companies just starting and they do need to learn a lot uh, before they're really, really big. And the bigger companies already have the, those kind of tools, uh, uh, but they're too expensive for the small ones. So that's why I think it's a, a nice product. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's yeah. that's that's nice. Um, did we did we answer the question? <laughs> what your big goal is, or is it just ongoing? Ongoing, ongoing. you're going to push it. Yeah, ongoing, ongoing, you're going to push a limit. Uh, there will be new startups coming your way. You're probably going to buy them. No, <laughs> and, no, and, it's, and so. <laughs> Well, my, my bigger goal is that uh, uh, I think uh, hopefully in, in, in like 10 years time that, that uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm really fed up with all those uh, startups doing it myself. I probably uh, hopefully be an investor uh, to, to still help those startups. But then they have to run. They have to, to make the long nights, uh, uh, long hours. And, and I will be sitting at home and just, just teasing them with questions, something like that. And drinking a single malt. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <Somewhere in between. laughs> I, I knew. Oh, that, I knew. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the different hobby of mine. Oh, but that, 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 that's also such a story that that uh, you start out with uh, with whiskey like seven eight years ago, uh, really enjoying it, and then I have to have to know everything about it. That's that's in my nature again. So uh, going on trips to Scotland, uh, going to tastings, uh, and then starting with a group of friends, uh, your own club. Uh, beginning of March this year, so immediately make it professional again. Uh, now we are having 52 members in our small club and doing eight tastings a year. Uh, so that's again, I, I'm thinking, why? Why? You can also have some rest and just enjoy your whiskey. And I want to make I make it a company again. It's it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a condition. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, 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 it's with with it's a very it's good condition, you know. It, yeah. As long as 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 long as I'm not picking at you at the bar, like you know, you have another <laughs> condition. Uh, <laughs> so this is a better one. You're you you you're just addicted to making companies. Uh, so I, that's, I think that's so. Great. I think so. And or, helping others. Yeah, and a, and a good excuse that you need to drink whiskey uh, whenever you want. Hey, and and. Of course, of course, from these goals, you know, like like continuous goal of of, of acquiring company, making them better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what is your biggest failure or your biggest learning moment, or how however you want to define it? So, what what gave you the biggest scar in your head? Well, I had one company that went bankrupt, and uh, that always hurts. Uh, it's, it's a really really good teacher because. You don't teach that on, on school how to handle uh, those kind of things. Uh, I got out just before they, they, I think three or four months before they, they really, uh, the, the ship sank. Uh, but it's still, it, it bites. And uh, actually, I, I cannot blame any, anyone because I did have partners and uh, I think they lost the most. So it is, it's horrible for me to, to say that, that uh, I'm angry at them. Uh, but it, we just, 
had some uh, uh, setbacks. Um, we were acquired two times almost for a lot of money. So we had good potential. Uh, even in, in the first months we existed, uh, we are already at Talpa. Uh, they want to buy one of our products for, for a huge amount of money. Um, so I don't know where it went wrong, um, but it did. And, and, and painfully it did. And then, well, it's, it's, it's three years of your life and a lot of money away. And then you just have to get up again and, and, and start over, basically. Yeah. But did you, did you analyze it? So, so of course, oh, yes. if, if there's something, <laughs> something like this, did you analyze and then turn it into your strength? So I'm going to use these things in the upcoming strength. So how did you turn this into your strength? Uh, well, first, uh, I'm, I'm analyzing everything. So that, that's also in my nature. When I'm, I'm not sleeping, I'm, I'm analyzing. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 Hi, honey, what do, want, what, what do you want to drink? Give me a coffee. Mm. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, but but um, first of all, I I, I said uh, I don't want to have any partners anymore because I'm 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 uh, I'm stopping with with any partner. And then just a few months later, uh, I was sitting with someone, and he was the right partner. And uh, so again, I picked him as a partner. And first, he, he said, "I want to be your investor." And I said, "Well, uh, in, in one of my projects, I said, well, I don't want to have any partners, so so no, thank you." And at that same moment, I realized that I was doing it all alone and didn't have anyone to, to have like a sparring partner. Uh, I could ask my wife, hey, do you want me to go left or right? And she said, well, whatever you want. And I, I don't want to have that answer. I want to have discussion. And uh, I couldn't do that with her. So with, the, with this guy, I thought, well, he is the right guy to, to have discussion with and to make my product better. So I did say yes to, to his investment. And then uh, we continued to... Uh, developing this product and I'm really really happy with that decision so picking your partners uh, is always a really good thing and you have to really think about it and and maybe even do some research uh, but well for me it's always a gut feeling and if the feeling is okay well I just go for it and and, and maybe if, if you have multiple startups uh, your feeling gets better and better each time and sure you, you get uh, wrong a few times as well but that's all also part of the game. So, so, so would you would you say this this is also the thing that you want to leave to the world? Uh, well, no, I'm not not want to have any statue for for myself. But uh, uh, if if something can be better, uh, yeah, I want to be part of that. Absolutely. Okay, okay. and this is this is this actually, if you can improve somebody's life, that would be good for yeah. you as well. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm improving the, the lives of my kids and my wife each day. You know? <laughs> oh, if they hear this podcast, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I will hear it from Horn. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, they, they will probably disagree because there are a lot of, lot of things in the household uh, I still have to do, uh, fixing things, etc., etc. So, <laughs> also, quite, quite a big list. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to send the link to your wife. Oh man! Hey, 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 what are you curious about right now? Um, a good one. Well, probably uh, how we're going to make the first uh, actual holograms, like like we saw in, in in Star Wars. That that's that's I'm curious how they will 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 do that, and I, I do have some ideas how to do it, but uh, I think. Others will, will probably do a better job. Hey, uh, yeah, because that's it's well, I like Star Wars naturally, and and that's right. it. who doesn't. Yeah, Is that but even a question? no, no, because I'm 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 always looking at holograms and and uh, the technology I use is from 1862. It's called Pepper's Ghost. It's a reflection technology, and and we want to improve that for for a long, long time. People are 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 willing to improve that so we had like steam and then project on steam or uh, even water that projected on water and it, it doesn't work the way uh, the holograms star wars work uh, so one of the ideas is this is if you have uh, three laser beams and and if you hit them if you cross them you get a pixel in the air and naturally i also have uh, three pixels somewhere else on the wall uh, but in mid air you will have a pixel so if you're moving those lasers quite rapidly, you probably see an image. 
And uh, I'm really waiting for people to pick that up, uh, probably already working on it. And then we will have like our first really uh, awesome holographs, holograms. That will be really hilarious because it will save us so much time in traffic that is like crazy. Exactly. Everybody will stay at home and you and I will have another podcast singing next to each other. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Drinking whiskey, but then at home. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, you can already do that naturally with, with the, the old technology, but uh, yeah, with, with, but with, not like that. I cannot sit down next to you and see you. Yeah, exactly. That, that will be a different thing, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be cool. But maybe it's, it's an even a, a good time, this moment, to, to start Second Life again. Uh, because Second Life it was, was really, really big, and now with virtual reality, so combine it with, with uh, having goggles and, and just walking in a different world. And maybe with, with the learnings from Second Life, with, with new rules, what, what can be done and what can't be done, um, well, we have probably have something new, new for our world. And then we can have whiskey, but then I'm just sitting at home with, with my goggles and you're sitting at home with your goggles, but we're still sitting next to each other. Yeah, yeah, didn't you... There was there was also a business uh, development in Second Life. Yeah, yeah, the, right? the, the Lin, so Lin, Lin, Lin Lab. Company, yeah, a lot of companies they were like opening an office and you can actually walk in. It was really official, like you know you can make yeah. an appointment, etc. Uh, so th those were the first steps in actually transponding the uh, the real world into virtual world, saving yeah. us all time uh, in in traffic and travel. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually having the meetings and uh, and, and business uh, gatherings online. Exactly, I, I was having a great time because I had meetings in in second uh, in, in uh, uh, second life uh, where we were we wanted to buy an island and put a, a opera house uh, on that island and to show uh, opera uh, uh, plays um, because at that time I had a record company with operas. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> uh, a long, long time ago. So, so I was really actually visiting people all around uh, or in Second Life, and they showed me what they did, their projects, and uh, we visited different buildings. Uh, and it was fun because someone was jumping away. Then you had the blue button, say, hey, hit me. And then what I was jumping away, like, beam me up, Scotty, and, and just arriving next to the building he wants to show me. So even on a normal screen and do that with VR... Oh, awesome. So hopefully Linden Lab is, is, is listening into this podcast and they still have a, a lot of uh, um, things laying around, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and, and then actually the commerce took over because you could buy uh, the latest uh, smartphone digitally to be uh, added to your uh, avatar. Uh, and even the sex industry was, was taking over and it was ridiculous because we had a beautiful Amsterdam build, build up with our central station and then you could walk into Central Station. You, you thought, let's go to watch the trains. But instead, you saw all kind of beds and complete Amsterdam led, uh, red light district was, was inside the Central Station. And you can make a, a virtual fuck. So, I, I, uh, and I was har harassed by someone uh, standing and he was like one meter bigger than me. He didn't have any clothes on and he was like standing in my way. Uh, uh, he couldn't pass. And I went to my, my favorite uh, football club, uh, uh, Ajax, to visit their arena. But on the, 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 uh, in the middle of the field, uh, someone from the competitive clubs, uh, Feyenoord, he was standing there with a the bazooka. So each visitor to the Ajax arena, he, he would shoot. <laughs> 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 but I think that's creative. <laughs> I really love that. <laughs> I would call it virtual terrorism, but that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's, it's <laughs> if it doesn't really hurt, it's fun. Uh, it's it's okay, and, yeah. and actually, harass the harassment I, is, isn't that fun, especially uh, if you're going to allow uh, kids uh, under eighteen uh, on the platform as well. So, uh, if you would define a few new rules, it would be an awesome world. Yeah, and actually, yeah, you, I think, so. and you can have your alleys uh, where you can do things uh, not for the general public, sure. I don't care, but but uh, I would I would just say Ready Player One. 
<laughs> hey, Amir, 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 let's build it. <laughs> let's just do it. Let's just do oh, it. my it next, my next awesome. startup. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it would be freaking awesome. Seriously, uh, yeah, yeah, Ready yeah. Player One. Yeah, for, for, for anybody, that's a movie by Steven Spielberg. If you haven't watched it yet, I mean, come on, uh, <laughs> just just do it. Exactly. Hey, hey, you know, we're coming to the to the ending, uh, and I have two questions for you. Uh, one, and the first one is: Is there something I should have asked you, but I didn't? Ooh. No, it was a nice discussion, and I think uh, no, don't know, don't know. Sorry. Okay, that's that. That's great. So, so I emptied you. Uh, 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 but but I didn't know about the opera. That was a surprise. <laughs> but never, nevertheless. Nevertheless, um, it was a good discussion. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, but I do have one very important for you. Mm -hmm. So you know that our listeners, like from Australia to San Francisco and everything in between, and youngsters, mm -hmm. people in school, young entrepreneurs, professionals. So, so taking this all into one joint thing, what is your key takeaway you want to share with our audience? Uh, well, probably the, the Nike uh, slogan, just do it. Uh, I waited a long time before I started uh, to become an entrepreneur because uh, I told I was want to to look at different companies first. Uh, but sometimes that's not the best strategy. If, if you are a student and and you don't have a mortgage and and kids uh, that, that need to be feeded, it's very easy to start something. And if you fail, you fail. Not a big lose. Uh, but if your family uh, needs you to to bring back uh, a paycheck. Uh, then it's more difficult to start. So if if you have the opportunity, just go for it, and and not like not like me, learning uh, uh, first at different companies. It's a different approach, but but if it feels right and you have the opportunity, just take it. I think that's it. So just do it. And I think that's that's also the essence of of being an entrepreneur. Just do it, and just with calculated risks naturally, but you have to take some risks. Risks, otherwise you're not an entrepreneur. Yeah. So just be 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 uh, used to challenge the status quo as a normal thing in your life, and yeah. just do it. Just that, do it. Yeah. If, if, if the, the old saying, if opportunity knocks on the door, open the door, and and uh, that's the same thing. If 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 you keep questioning, hey, can I do this? On well, I, I think I think. Don't think too much. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't overthink it. Don't yeah, overthink. Yeah, it's it's just, it's just it's fucking good. It's it's just time you put in, and 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 maybe some some money. But uh, if 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 it's not someone else's money, uh, well, that then there isn't that big harm, and it's a very, really really good lesson. And uh, schools are very expensive, uh, especially in in the United States. Uh, and this is something you cannot learn on those kind of schools. So just by doing it, you learn so much more. Uh, and there is no book on life. No, and there exactly. is no book on entrepreneurship. There are only use cases that yeah. you can read about. Yeah. And your journey is going to be unique and special only for you. And you will have stuff coming mm -hmm. around that's uh, crazy enough, very special to you. Exactly. And, and, and one last thing, if, if you have a good idea, just talk to a lot of people about that idea. Because many people they put it in in, in their uh, pocket and and they want to keep it a secret as long as possible. But talking to different people and naturally, if they're trustworthy, uh, uh, they will ask you the right questions and that will always improve your product. And I always say, if if your mother doesn't understand it, uh, then it's too complex. Then the the majority of people will also not understand it. And and I was teasing my mother because uh, in the beginning she wasn't that tech savvy at all. Uh, but I was always uh, asking her about, about the, the latest things. And at a certain point, she's really, really smart. She, she's in, uh, no, not inventing, but she's finding new apps and finding new ways to do things. So I said, oh, I need a new mom because uh, I cannot challenge you anymore with, with, with difficult things. Uh, and she, she thought it was really funny. And, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's the truth. Uh, you need to have a lot of people around you and with, with different education, uh, doesn't even matter present your idea and ask them their opinion because they have an opinion and the mass who will probably need to buy your product also has an opinion. So if you hear that upfront, you can improve your product before going to market. 
I think that is a beautiful takeaway, uh, Jeroen. Thank you for that. And no. thank you for your time and your beautiful story. Um, I'm, I'm looking for the subscription for Ready Player One. So you know, <laughs> now you've got it going. So um, I wish you a wonderful day. And thanks again. Okay. Um, and until next time. Absolutely. Thanks Thank you very much. Next time a whiskey. Thank you. <laughs> next time whiskey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much for listening to the 12th episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast with Jeroen Moll, the serial entrepreneur. Join us next week for the interview with Azra Kromadzic, anthropologist at the New York University and the author of the book Citizen of an Empty Nation. Here is a short piece of our conversation that we will be listening to next week. Huh, because I never, I, I don't know, that's a hard question because I never, you know, I don't think about myself as being successful, but I can say when I feel content. Um, and I think for me, uh, being content and some kind of aha moment, let's say, a moment of certain kind of fulfillment and feeling that you're doing something in the world and it matters, or to me, that's a classroom, broadly conceived. Join me next week to hear the rest of our story. Until then, you have been listening to Challenging the Status Quo podcast with your host, Amir Sabirovich. I wish you all an awesome day.